Yo, yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to The Prodigy Designer. It's Jimmy and today I want to be answering a question for you guys that I've always wondered as a student but I've never really heard anybody really talk about it in a larger context. So when you're going through school, they're going to teach you three main things that that every single industrial designer needs to have. These things are the core skills of every single industrial designer and that is how to sketch, how to CAD, and how to model make. So sketching, it's a great way to really put your ideas down onto paper. It's a quick and dirty way to do it. And then there's CAD, which is you're getting a little bit more refined now and you're building it in a computer software, something like SolidWorks. That's the program that I use. It really depends on which uh, exact field you want to enter in with industrial design. Like if you're going to be designing cars, transportation, you'll probably be using Alias for your CAD software. And then you move on to model making and prototyping and this could be very rough from just like foam you know foam core or even getting super refined 3d printing painting it sanding it clear coating it all of that good stuff if you guys haven't seen my model making uh video yet i'll link it all down in the description below so these are the three main things that industrial designers need to know and need to learn to have and we're constantly improving our skills and getting better and better and better. Now here's the thing though is these three things don't necessarily mean you're a good industrial designer. It really doesn't because if you think about it, you know, there's sketchers out there, the people that draw and people that are artists, are they designers? Well, not quite, not really, right? There's people that CAD, they, all they do is they CAD, mechanical engineers CAD quite often. So are they designers? Not really either. Um, there are people that model make, the only thing that they do is they fabricate things, they create things, they make things. Are those people designers? Not quite really either. So what really makes a designer? If you guys follow Steve Jobs at all, how Steve Jobs describes design is probably the best way I've ever heard design being described. And that is design is not about how it looks. And you know, it's very often that people confuse it with that. Design is how it works. You know, so if when we're coming up with these solutions, when we're coming up with these products, these products are tools that people use every single day. And so not only do we have to make them look nice so, so that they appeal to people, um, but we also have to figure out what is the best way this thing is going to work? You know, how is it going to be held? How is it going to be packaged? How it's going to be made? These are the questions that the industrial designer needs to develop on their own. And so you kind of have to, figure this out first and once you do once you have that solution in your head once you have that vision in your head so it's intangible it's in your head it's floating in there and you need to eventually represent it and show it to either your students your 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 classmates your professor your boss and so it has to come out in a certain way right and so I mean it could come out in the form of an essay you could be literally typing out and writing out your idea and that is a form of representation but it's not very powerful when it comes to the world of design and so what we have selected to choose what's the best way to represent this idea that we have floating in our head and that is with sketching with model making and with catting you guys get that? You see how it all comes together in context like that? Dude, this is gold that I'm giving you guys. I've never heard anybody describe it in this way and I really wish somebody had when I was learning and going through it. I feel like I would be improving 10 times faster. And so do you guys follow me right there? So when you have this idea in your head, you want to create it within these three main type of skills that te they teach us in school. And so the question is, how good do you actually need to be when it comes to sketching and model making and prototyping? You could literally spend the rest of your life trying to improve on these main three skills. And what I would say is that you should be proficient enough to be able to represent your idea as accurate as possible. So the idea is, let's say you have an idea to create, I don't know, like a like um, like a, a really cool camera, right? 
So, so you have this idea for a camera. So when you're trying to put it down and represent it and you're trying to sketch it, you're sketching it, but it's not quite exactly how you want it to be. There's something wrong with it. There's something weird going on. Your skills is really the bottleneck there. And, and so you need to improve your skills in sketching, improve your skills in CAD, improve your skills in model making in order to get it to where you're actually representing your idea as closely as possible. This harmony right here, these two that come together, if you could if you could get these two at the same level, this is when I would say you're really doing something right and you're mastering industrial design. When you actually reach your actual, you know, technical skills, uh, up to this point and you're representing your ideas as good as possible, this is when you got to start asking yourself, okay, what other things do I need to start working on? Because you start reaching what I call or what a lot of people call uh, the point of diminishing returns. And this means it's kind of like um, the more hours you put in, say, sketching, the more you're going to improve, right? But you're going to eventually reach a point where you plateau, meaning that you get really, really good at sketching and you're putting more hours and more hours in, and you may be getting better. It's probably to a point where it's not very noticeable. And the same goes with CAD and same goes with model making. Like when you buy a nice pair of headphones, like you might buy a $20 pair of headphones and it's going to be pretty good, right? It's like, okay, this thing works, right? I can hear my music. I can listen to my podcast. Yeah, I can watch Jimmy's videos and hear him right but then you buy a $200 pair of headphones and you're like wow these are pretty nice you know I could hear more bass and I could hear more treble and I could hear all this good stuff right it's so much better than the $20 headphones and then you buy that $500 pair of headphones and you're like okay this is pretty nice you know materials are a little better it sounds kind of about the same you know so you guys see what I'm saying here is that the more money you spend the the small little improvements you will gain in that time so I say you don't want to waste your time if you if you are really good at sketching you're good enough you're good at CAD you're good enough you're proficient enough I would say stop there you know like this is a question that I dealt with when I was growing when I was growing as a designer and I was like you know I'm pretty good at sketching and I'm pretty good at CAD like how good do I actually need to be this is what I am trying to explain to you guys if you guys have followed what I'm saying then you know this is super super gold guys and you're going to be improving your skills times 10. So when you reach that point, you got to really ask yourselves, okay, now I need to kind of expand my vision, expand my decision making, expand my solutions, what is actually possible out there. This is when you start doing research about manufacturing, about what is possible out there, the new technologies that are coming in. And when, when you start growing this side, you know, your imagination, your solution, your actual design skills, this is when you start to increase this. And then so now what you got to do is be like, okay, I've reached a point where I have way more ideas and way more, you know, ideas of form and development. Now you have to be like, okay, well, can I execute that? Can I show that to people? You know, so then now if you can't, you gotta have to focus on your core skills again, your technical skills again, to be able to match that and represent these ideas that are floating your head as more accurately as possible. All right, guys, you know, I hope you learned and followed exactly what I'm saying there. If you did, you're going to be killing it and you are definitely doing the right thing. If you learned something in this video, definitely hit that thumbs up button and also leave a comment down below telling me if there's any other question you want me to answer in the next video. Also, hit that subscribe button so that my videos come right to you guys so you don't miss any of them. I know you don't want to. And also please share any of these videos with somebody that you think would also benefit from them. If you're a student and you have classmates, um, if you are a coworker, if you are a parent and you want to show your student how beautiful and amazing industrial design is, please share these videos with them. There's no other better place. All right, guys. This is Jimmy, and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.